such sights to show you. This is Bronco Juggalo, and boy, do I have a deleted scenes for my Patreons this week. Yes, he does. And Bill here, as always. <laughs> and we are doing... Hey, can you guess what we're doing? <laughs> All right, take it away. We're doing Clyde Barker's 1987 film, Hellraiser. Sorry, we didn't have a DVD Hell case. Hellraiser! You can't sing. But we didn't have a DVD case, so here. Good enough. Yes, I can too sing. But if I do, if I don't sing it and I like actually put the fucking music on, then Ozzy always gets me flagged with copyright and they block my video. Oh, okay, yeah. So, uh, starring Ashley Lawrence as Kirsty, Clara Higgins as Julia, and of course the quite soon to be famous right after this film, like really famous, Doug Bradley as Pinhead. Yeah. Or, he wasn't actually known as Pinhead yet. In nope. this movie, he was lead Cenobite. Yep. So, yeah, he wasn't Pinhead yet. He was just lead Cenobite. Yeah, no, yeah. In fact, Pinhead was the name, I believe, that the fans gave him. Oh, really? And then they just cool. kind of ran with it. Why not? So, if I remember correctly, Julie, her husband, they move into a family home of uh, Larry, her husband, they move into his, like, I don't know if it's ancestral, you want to call it, or whatever, his family-owned home, where his brother just happened to die while he was filling around with a freaking magical cube. Hey. That was supposed to give him powers to seek the ultimate pleasure and the ultimate pain. Why you want to do that, I don't know, because people are weird. You know, pleasure's fine, but pain? Uh, I don't know. And whatever floats your boat. they ripped his soul apart, literally, and his body apart, and... You know, so they move into this house. Uh, they don't yes. know what's going on. Good times. It turns sounds... out, though, they all have secrets. The whole family has secrets. Well, of course, every family has secrets. Everybody has skeletons. Well, the big secret here is that Julie, was, or Julia, was actually fucking Frank, the brother. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. for who knows how long on the side. While uh, old Larry boy was out doing the good husband thing, you know. Yeah, I mean it's one. Home bacon. It's one thing to cheat on your spouse. It's one thing to cheat on your spouse with the brother of the spouse. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. That's it's really fucked, fucked up. up. Anyways, uh, yeah. So an accident happens. Larry gets cut open. The blood drips on the floor. It brings Frank back to life because the house is still kind of under a curse. And mm. Frank has to get his body back. And how does he get his body back? Sucking it out of others. Mm -hmm. So he gets Julia to start killing people for him and bringing them over and, you know, taking their skin, basically. And that's pretty much our movie. Um, Frank's trying to escape hell. Hell wants him back. They don't know he's gone, no. Yep. <laughs> and uh, pretty much wrap it up. That's pretty much it, right? Yeah, they're bad caretakers of yeah. hell if they don't know if somebody's gone. Yeah. It's kind of a... They don't, they don't. What kind of a uh, hell overlord are you? <laughs> I don't know. That's just me. Anyways, though, guys, this is an absolutely awesome film. It, it is, is considered awesome. one of the true classic horror movies. Uh, I can't say the re that same thing about the rest of the franchise. There's some gems here and there, but... Mm, well, pretty much there's like one gem after this. There's a pretty good movie, then a couple decent flicks, and then some really shitty movies. Yeah. But we're going to review the whole franchise for you. But we're starting, of course, with Clyde Barker's Hellraiser. Hey. Now, this was Clyde Barker's first directorial debut as far as a major movie goes. And he said that the cast and crew were very gentle with him and they forgave him his mistakes. Which, you do catch a mistake here and there in this film. It's not a perfect movie. But overall, this movie turned out really good. Oh, I mean, yeah. This is an amazing film. Great film. Uh, Doug Bradley actually had a really hard time hitting all his marks and his cues. Because the black contacts that he wore as Pinhead obstructed his vision. So he really couldn't see very well. And he had a really hard time with this film. I think as the film's gone along, I think they may have, like, the technology advanced a little bit. but So he could see one, better? As far as this one, you know, hell, by the newest ones, they probably could just do it with freaking CGI, making the eyes black. You know? Yeah, I would think so. But mm -hmm. so he overdubbed a lot of the cast members' voices to remove the British accents so people would think that the film was filmed in America and based in America instead of filmed in London. 
Oh, all right. So a lot of the accents were actually overdubbed from other actors. One final thing that I did find out about this movie is that they had to do a lot of reshoots. And the reshoots weren't because things were bad or things weren't done right. Censors? Censors. The uh, NPAA okay. okay. and the censors okay. said, you can't release this without these reshoots. So a lot of the film, as far as I know, I don't think they've ever released a special edition or a director's cut. Not that I know of. If they did, I don't know about it. That's probably a lot more graphic. Hey, we like that. <clears throat> so, I have no cons for this film. How about you? Guess what? I don't either. This is a well-shot film. Yeah, it's... It's a, got a great story. It's got a good cast. It is kind of considered a masterpiece among horror fans, and I can definitely see why. There is yeah, yeah. some, from a filmmaking aspect, there's a, a glitch or two here and there, but I it's totally forgettable. overlook it. It's forgettable. Yeah. It's not this, enough. It's not enough. This whole movie it. is yeah, just so probably. fucking good that it doesn't matter. Exactly. And my first big pro for this movie is the atmosphere. This okay, is one of okay. the most genuinely creepy, scary atmosphere film films that I have ever seen in my life. You sit there watching the movie, and I'm telling you, the best way to watch this movie, in the dark, by yourself. It is a creepy-ass well, film. Man, the atmosphere of this film is just creepy as hell. It is. And it fucking is amazing, and it works, and... Kudos to Doug Bradley for that. You know, it might have been his first time, but he knows what's creepy, and he knows it's scary. And yeah. Oh, yeah, and kudos to uh, Clyde Barker as well. This is Wait, just... No, did I say, uh, yeah, I said Doug you Bradley. You said Doug I meant, Bradley. I meant Clyde Barker. Yeah, sorry. I meant Clyde Barker. I bet. Uh, kudos to Doug, yeah. Doug Bradley, too, you know. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, my first pro for this film is the cast. I love the cast of this film. There isn't a bad acting job in this film. They all are great. And one of the actors, I love him from Deep Space Nine. He played Garrick. That was um, her father. The guy that plays her father. He plays Larry. Yeah, Larry. The guy that plays Larry was in Deep Space Nine. Uh, I there the, some of the ancillary characters. Well, I don't give a shit about the that. best acting, but that's not a big deal. Who cares about them? Who gives a shit? Like I'm talking yeah. about who you're seeing on screen. Yeah, ninety percent of this movie, mm -hmm. you know, the main people. Right. That's what I'm talking about. None of them did a bad job. Very awesome. And the guy that plays Larry, he is he he. He nails creepy down good when he's now uh, Frank. Come to daddy. Come to daddy. <laughs> and he gets that look on his face. He's fucking creepy as shit. Yep. Pedophile in the making. But throughout the entire film, other than that, he's normal. You know, mm -hmm. acts like a normal guy. And then he makes that transition to this very creepy dude flawlessly. Yeah, really good acting. Done oh, yeah. very well. Uh, Frank was actually played by two different people. There's Frank when he's alive, and then there's Frank when he's the creature, the skinless wonder, you want to, as I like to call him. But uh, I think, like you said, the actors both did an amazing job. Uh -huh. The physical acting of the guy that plays him, I think his name's Oliver. So I can't remember what his name is right now. But yeah, his physical acting is just amazing. The big acting shout out I want to address is Claire Higgins as Julia. Oh, yeah, she is amazing. She, dude, oh, yeah. this chick makes you believe that she is an evil fucking bitch. <laughs> I mean, she is really good at playing evil. I really enjoyed it. I really feel that she is the best on-screen villainess in a horror film since Pamela Voorhees. I thought that she was just a great... It was a great acting job. It was just a phenomenal performance yes. of an absolute evil... My next pro is that the special effects, the gore effects, the makeup effects are all just fucking top notch. Also, pro even the mine. CGI effects in this 1987 CGI looks better than some of the shit I've seen in recent years. Yeah. The it scenes does. where um, Frank's body is coming back together looks amazing. It, hell yeah. An awesome transformation sequence. Fuck just yeah. Just absolutely amazing. Fuck yeah. And I just fucking love it. I think the gore is on point. The the special effects are on point. When 
he's all in pieces and his mouth is moving and it's just the face and his mouth's moving. That's cool, you know? Everything in this movie is just so fucking cool. Hell yeah, I love the effects as well, the blood and gore. But my next, it, I'm just going to go right off of that because this falls in there. My next pro for this movie is the look of our Cenobites. The look of them. All of them look fucking amazing. They're mm -hmm. fucking creepy as fuck. Yeah. And only two of them speak. And that makes it even creepier when only two speak and the others are just mm -hmm. silent. Like, what, the fat one grunts a little bit? And, and the then chatter goes chattered. <laughs> That's it, man. That that's totally it. But they look fucking amazing. Oh, oh that well, female one with the throat thingy. Or throat female, it. She's actually known as female cinnabite in this movie. Yeah, female cinnabite in this one with her throat slit and mm -hmm. pulled open and like Yeah. Wow, that's it, it, they're it amazing. Definitely, it definitely looking. took the blood and gore and S and M levels. Yeah, they do. Up. They really did look like S and M, didn't mm -hmm. they? That's what a lot of it was based on. S and M from hell. Yeah. Mm. Because most people don't cut themselves and shit with S&M, do they? Yeah, there's a lot of people that do. Okay. Um, the masochistic part, that's the painful part where you want pain. And I thought they used whips like for that. that. They do all kinds of shit. There's people, they like pull, use hooks in the flesh. There's all kinds of things. Not my cup of tea, but hey, to eat your own. Yep. <laughs> all right, what you got next? One of my favorite things about this movie is that it unintentionally gives birth to a horror icon. I do not believe, yeah, and this yeah. is my opinion, I do not believe that Clyde Barker ever thought that Pinhead was going to be the main character. I don't believe that he was ever, you know, supposed to be as big as he becomes. And and he wasn't. It's, he just, wasn't. it's just amazing that, you know, that that role of lead Cenobite became this huge icon yeah. that we now know as Pinhead. And I just love that. It's absolutely amazing. He's had his own comic books. He's yeah. had, you know, uh, movies, short films, uh, entire, you know, documentaries all based around his character alone. Doug Bradley made, you know, a fortune being Pinhead. Yep, and it was an accident. Yep. Complete accident. I mean, he was he's uh, definitely an actor of Clyde Barker's and a friend of his because... He's actually in the first short film Clyde Barker did of this, where he plays Pinhead as well. Hmm. And uh, I actually have that. We're going to have to review that probably towards the end or something. Yeah, yeah, we'll get to that one. Um, well, I guess I've got, I've got one other um, pro for this film. There are some great quotes in this film. The dialogue's a pro for me, too. We have yes. some of the most quotable lines in all of horror. We'll tear your soul apart. I've got three, two of them. One of them's Larry's, and the other two are pinheads, you know? Um, we have such sights to show you. Mm -hmm. We'll tear your soul apart. And then Larry's line, Jesus. Well, well, it was Frank and Larry's skin. Frank and Larry's skin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got to, yeah, Frank in Larry's skin. Jesus wept. And then they tear him apart. Hey, you can't go wrong when you got good writing, and the Bible's pretty good writing. Hey, you can't go wrong with good writing, period. <laughs> okay. You got anything else? Uh, that, I was definitely going to say that as well. I love oh, okay. the dialogue okay. of the movie. Uh, the end of the film, when I was younger, the end of the film kind of confused me. You know, with right. the dragon showing up and all that stuff. I, I didn't really see the point in it. But now as I was sitting back and watching it again this past time, I was like, you know, I kind of dig it. It's kind of cool. Uh, the monster okay. in the house at the end of the movie. That was from another know. dimension. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I was just like, you know, I thought that they were trying to, you could tell that they were trying to expand a little bit. Okay. And I thought it was a little weird that they did it towards the end of the films. But... It is what it is. I think that it didn't take anything away from the story that had been put down already. I thought that it added to it. So my final pro is that I just love the story of this film. It is. It's a great story. I think story. it's a good story. It's based off of Clive Barker's uh, The Hellbound Heart. And it's just a, a really good rendition. I think he did a great job writing the screenplay, adapting his novel to a screenplay. And... I just, I love this movie all around. It's a great film. Okay. And, but the funny part about it is, is that the Hellraiser franchise and the Hellraiser film in particular 
never comes to my mind when I think about my favorite horror films. But every time right. I watch yeah, it, yeah. every time I watch it, I fucking love it. You know? I, I don't know why it doesn't come up then, but who knows? I think it's just because I'm very much into slashers. But hey. To each their own again. Yeah. Anyways, guys, this is Bronco Juggalo. Peace. And Bill's saying good night. I wonder what this does if I actually open it. are you supposed to be? Oh, not the big ball. I just a ball from the other side. Wow, this did not do what I thought it was going to do. Let's just shut you off. Goodbye. Yeah. Thank God that's over. Oh, no tears, please. It's a waste of good suffering. Such sights to show you.